have our we have our uh, guest lecture, uh, Professor Ian Yu Chen or Prof Chen, that will deliver the information and uh, all knowledge about animal digestive system or gastrointestinal system of the animal. So maybe uh, it will be a very valuable time for us to have Prof Chen with, with us today. So I hope uh, uh, students could pay attention to the class. And thank you very much for all lecturers who are willing to come to our session today. Maybe we can share also uh, information and ideas on human biology, especially on gastrointestinal system. So the time will be up to uh, 11.50, Prof Chen, or around 12.50, Taiwan time, 12.50. Okay. Okay, so if you would like to have a discussion session uh, during the course, it will be very open for uh, Prof Chen. Okay. Okay, okay. so uh, the time will be yours, Prof Chen, for the next okay. until 12.50. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Professor Ayu. Kind of introduction. Yeah, I am Chen. I, I can... I, I'm a professor in the Grocer Institute of Medical Sciences. And also I am a former director of the International Master and PhD program in medicine. So there are many students from the Indonesia to, to, our, to our program for the PhD and for the master, master degrees. So I think I'm very really happy to have the opportunity to, to, to have to introduce the course, to have a course, to have a teaching course in the in the Indonesia. So today, the topic I want to share with all the students and the professors is a uh, animal digestive system. The original topic is the GI system, but I make a little bit modified because the biology in Taiwan is the first is all it's for the for the first year students. So we all we we usually call it the general biology. But I after discuss with the IU Professor IU, I found it. In, in the Indonesia, maybe the, the third year student to choose the biology, so it's a human biology. So mm. I, I'm not sure the I prepare the, the slides is okay or not, but I will do my best to, to have a clearly introduction of the digestive system in, in the animals, okay? Thank you. So I have a two slides to very brief intro, introduce myself, yeah. So because it's the, the first time I we we meet we meet each other on air, on, so I just want to have a have a brief introduction. The CV. So I'm a professor in the in the in the TMU. I also have a joint appointment professor in several uh, several programs, and the, my research. I hope I also hope we can have the cooperation in the future. Maybe my research. We have I have the four four major topic okay. in in my hands. The first one is in vivo and the in vitro anti-tumor study of the natural products. As we know, Taiwan, Taiwan have many plants. Also, Taiwan people, people like to intake the, the, the Chinese herbs. So I did a lot of work about using the natural product to study the, the biological function of the natural products, like, like the such as the apoptosis or anti-carcinogenesis. And I also did, did some work in the in vivo and the in vitro anti-inflammatory studies and also molecular anti-tumor mechanism study. And uh, our, our latest publication related to lung, fibro lung fibrosis studies. So this is my brief, my outline of my research, okay? So I come back to the topic. So today I want to, I want to introduce the, the, the GI system, the digestive system. So the first five slides I remember, I will, I will introduce the, animal body because the digestive, the animal body, the structure of the animal body needed to fit the function. So in the, in the animal, the structure needed to fit the function. So, so there are two terms I show here. The first one is anatomy. Anatomy is the study of structure, structure of, the, of an organism. So anatomy is like the, just, just study the structure. And the physiology is the study of the function of the organ performs organism perform, organ performs. So 
So these two terms usually the student may be me misunderstanding the anatomy, the difference between the anatomy and the physiology. Anatomy is for the structure and the physiology is for the function. And also the animal structure ha has a hierarchy from the basic to the higher level. So the basic one, the basic label is cellular label, like the muscle cell and the tissue label, muscle tissue and the organ label. So the cellular tissue organ system and the finally different systems will compose together to, to, for, a, for an organism. So the cellular label, tissue label, organ, organ label, and the several organ will, 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 will be come out to the organ system label, like the circulating system. And the organ, organism label, many organ system function together to, to make the organism can, can live and can, can do anything. And the epithelial tissue cover the whole, the whole the body, outside and the inside the body. So epithelial tissue cover and the lines the body of and its parts. So there are several different epithelium, like the, the first one is the simple squamous epithelium. The single squamous, simple, simple squamous epithelium locates in the air sac of the lung. So it's very, very, very thin and easy, easy to, to make the, to make the material easy to, 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 to move in and move out. And the, the second one is simple cuboidal epithelium forming uh, like the tube in the kidney. And the, today, we, we will I will introduce the, the GI system. So the, in the intensity, the epithelium is a simple coronal epithelium lying in the intensity, okay? So the, in the intensity, the the epithelial tissue belonging to the simple coronal epithelium. And also the stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified may, means the multi-layers, multi-layer squamous epithelium locates it in the region. They are easy to, the, the cell easy to, to, stay, to die or to death and they needed to proliferate to repress the, the, the upper layer. So the stratified squamous epithelium lo like locates in the esophagus. So the GI system in the intensity, the epithelium is a simple coronal epithelium. And the connective, connective tissue also is very important in the, in, the, in the body. So the connective tissue binds and supports other tissues. So connective tissue can be, in the biology, the connective tissue can be divided into loose connective tissue located under the skin and the adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is very, it is it, for the for the fat storage. So store fat in large and the packet in the cell. And the blood, blood also belonging to the connective tissue, is a full in connective tissues. And also there is there there are dense con dense matrix, like the like the fibrous connective tissue forming forming the ligament, and the cartilage is a strong but a flexible skeletal material. And the bone also is the connective tissue, it's a rigid connective tissue embedded in the calcium. Okay, so this is a connective tissue. And the muscle also, also muscle tissue function in the movement and also very important parts in the, in the GI systems. So in the GI, the muscle tissue include the skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, but today I want to introduce the smooth muscle. So smooth muscle, is in the, in, the, in the intensity, in the inside organ. So the smooth muscle lack the striations in the world of the digestive, di, digestive systems. And the, con, the smooth muscle contraction is slower, much slower than the skeletal muscle. But the, the smooth muscle contraction, the, the tense is slower, is not, not as strong as the skeletal muscle, but, they, but the smooth muscle con, contraction can sustain for a long time. So, so you can see the intensity over, over small intensity, the contraction you can, can sustain for a long time, but not as the, the skeletal muscle contraction so strong. And uh, then I want to introduce the, the digest, digestion systems. So the animal inject, ingest their food in the, in the variety of ways. So all the animal eat other organism, even even dead or alive or in peace. So 
in general, animal feed into one of the three di dietary, cat dietary cat category. So it depends on the animal, they, they may be some animal only eat the, eat the vegetable, eat the grass, and some animal eat the meat, and some animal eat both. So we can divide the animal into the herbivores, carnivores, and the omnivores. So the herbivores is an uh, animal it like to eat the autotroph. Autotroph means the plants or or average. They they can produce the 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 nutrient by themselves. So like the gorilla cows and the hares and the many snails, they can they can eat eat the autotroph, so called the herbivores. They only eat the autotroph. So 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 these animals are herbivores. And the, the other, some animal only eat the other animal, like the, called the carnivores. Carnivores like the shark, hawk, spider, and the snake eat the other animals. And the, some animal eat, eat the plants, also eat the meat, called the animals. Animals like the cockroach, bear, raccoon, and the human also, they can eat the plant and the animal, consume the plant and the animal. So divide, we can divide it, the, the animal by their, by their foods to the herbivores, carnivores, and the omnivores. And the animal that ingest the food in a variety of the ways. So it depends on, this is divided the animal by the foods, and this is divided by the way, by the ways to get the foods. So like the, some aquatic animal, like the crane, crane is uh, living, living in, the, in the water, so called the suspension feeder, because they will use the, they will intake the food particle from the water, from, from the water. So this, this type, this type of the animal called the suspension feeder. And the second one is the deposit feeder. Some animal living, living in the, in the dirt or in the sediments. So they will decay the organic material consumed along the soil and the sediment. So like the earthworm. A swan, so a swan can live in, live in the soil, and also they, they eat, the earthworm intake the dirt and the sediment and the digestive the organic material for, for themselves. So the earthworm is a deposit feeder. And the, some animal living on the food, living on the food, like the, like the worm or man, man goat, man goat living, living, living on the food. So the, this type of the animal called the substrate feeder. Substrate feeder living in or on their food source, eating their way through the food, so called the substrate feeder. And the, some animal maybe, maybe suck, suck, the, suck the fluid from the human or from the, the, other, the other plants called the fluid feeders, like, like the aphids and the mosquito. Both animal, they, they, they Mosquito suck the blood from the animal for their nutrient. So this animal called the fluid feeder. And the, most animal can can use the teeth to 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 spread the food to small pieces. So called the buck feeders. So most animal are buck buck feeders. They can eat eat relative, relative large piece of the foods. So this is buck feeders. So. Divided the animal based on the food and the based on the type type of the they get the they get the nutrients. We 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 can divide it to the animal to different different feeders or or to to different herbivores, different type of animals. And the, how the animal to digest the, the food. So the food processing occur in four stage. So an animal want to get the nutrient to to intake the foods and the to, to support the body to, 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 to live. So the, they, the animal needed to injection. Injection means the eat. They, the animal needed to eat, to eat the foods. So injection is eating, is the first stage of the digestion. And the, the second stage is the digestion. The digestion, the purpose of the digestion is to, to make, the, make the large particle, large food to small foods to small, small pieces or small molecule for the, for the absorption. So the second step is digestion. 
So the digestion is breaking down of the food into molecules smaller enough for the body to, to absorb. So all the organisms using the same monomer, why, why, we need, why the foods need to be digested before absorption? Because all the organisms using the same monomer, like the human and the bear and the other animals have the same amino acid and they have the same fatty acid, but the macromolecules are different. So all the, all the foods need to digest to, to, the, to the monomer and the, to synthesize the different different large, large, large molecules. So all the organisms use the same monomer, such as the amino acid. And the, the digestion, there are two phases. One is the mechanical breakdown. Mechanical breakdown means the like 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 a human, like a human intake the foods needed to use the tools, use the teeth to to digest, to make the make the large money. That large, large foods to, to pieces. And the, the second step, we call it the chemical breakdown. Chemical breakdown also called the hydrolysis. Needed to use the different enzyme to, to digest the small pieces to the monomer, and then they can be absorption. So the third step is absorption. So the cell lying the digest tray to take up the nutrient molecule and the absorb the nutrient into the body. And the finally, called the elimination. Elimination is undigested material pass out the digestive tract, called the elimination, like the phases goes through, okay? So this is the four, four, four stage in the food procession, including the injection, digestion, absorption, and the elimination. So there is a figure in the, in the, in the biology book, so the foods needed to through the mouse and the mechanical breakdown, the foods that will be mechanical break, broken to the small pieces of the foods. And then the chemical breakdown using the enzy enzymatic hydrolysis to small molecules. And finally, the small molecules will be absorbed. So absorption is the third step. And the undigested material will be eliminated from the body the elimination. So there are four steps before the food procession. So the many animals using the lower, lower grade animals using the simple body plants, like the fray worm, they only have the have the have the have the sac or only have, have one opening. We call it the mouse. So the simple, the lower grade animal using the gastrovascular cavity for the for the as the di, digestion digestion cavity, so like the hydra hydra capture a, a, cap, captures its prey, and the, and the prey will enter the gastro gastrovascular cavity, and the, the like the the hydra the hydra intake the prey and the, the prey then be partially digested by the enzyme, and the secreted by the gastrothermal cells, and then the the small, the small pieces of the foods will be endocytosis intracellularly. So the lower grade animal, they use the, because the, they are very simple. So they are only one, one layer of the cells. So they use the intracellular digestion to, to hydrolyze the macromolecule to the monomolecule and the, for, their, for their nutrients. And the undigested material is in, in eliminated through the, through the mouth. Because the lower grade animal like the hydra, they only have the one opening called the mouse. So the so the food intake from the mouse and the, the undigested material outside removed from the mouse. Okay. So so the so the hydra using the intracellular digestion to produce the 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 nutrient for for their body for for them. So this is the hydra, the structure of the hydra, including the tentacle. And this is a mouse. And the layer is a prey. The prey, so the prey will intake from the mouse. And then the, the wall of the hydra, only one cell, one cell. So the, the cell will, will release the, the enzyme to digest the prey into the small molecule. And the, the small food particle will engulf it into the cell. And then 
the intracellular digestion will use in the use use the hydrolytic enzyme and the produce the small molecule and the, for the for the cells. So this is the lower grade animal. They can like the hydra. They use in the intracellular digestion. And the flavon flavon is a, a little bit higher than the than the hydra. So they have the the, the cinderian and the flavon flavon. They most animals all already have the complete the digestive tray for the or elementary canal. So the digestive tray also completed the digestive tray also called the elementary canal for the, from the mouth to the anus. So the, so the hydra only have one, one opening is mouth. And the higher, higher animal has a two, two, two open. One is a mouth, the other is a anus. So they have two opening. So the food injected through the mouth and the pharynx Okay, and the, through the esophagus. Esophagus is the from the mouth to the stomach. Uh, so this is the, the best way. So the food injected through the through the mouth and the pharynx and the pass through the esophagus and the lead, lead to the stomach in human. And the, in the other animal, they have the cross, leisure for storage or stomach, depending on the species. So different species, like the birds. Or like the earthworm, they have the geyser. Like the grasshopper, they have the crops. So this, the crop and the geyser and the stomach are the maybe the, the function are very similar. So they just the storage the fruits and the soft the fruits and the, the make the food easy to be digested. Digest. So the food is injected through the mouth and the pharynx and the passages through the esophagus lead to move to the crops, geyser, and the stomach depending on the different species. And the, the cloth and the stomach usually serve as the food storage organ. So yet they, the function is for the food storage. And the geyser, geyser in some animals, they have some stone, some stone in the geyser. And the, the function of the geyser is to grind and the fragment of the foods. And then it, the, after the storage and after the grind the foods, and then, and then the foods will, will move to the in intensity. In the intensity is very important for the digestion. So the intensity, the digestive, and there are many, many several digestive enzymes in the intensity. They will, the enzyme will catalyze the hydrolysis of the, of the foods to small, small monomer. And the undigested waste are eliminated through the anus. So the system, enable the organism to ingest additional foods earlier meal completed the digest. So the, the, we have the long digestion digestion organ. So this system, when, when the foods from the mouth, they will move into the stomach, move into the intensity, but they are, the foods are not well complete, are not well complete the digestion. We can intake the more foods. So the digestive system can enable the animals to ingest additional foods earlier the foods are completed digested. So this is the important, important function of the digestive systems. <clears throat> so this slide will show the three different, three different animals. This is the earthworm. We can, we, we can just very quickly to, to see the, to see the digest, di, digest, digest, digestion systems from the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, crops and geyser. This is for the storage of the food. This is for the grain of food. And then the food will move into the small intensity. The intensity can digest, release the digestion enzyme to catalyze the hydroly hydrolysis of the foods. And then the anus. So they are two opening, one food intake from the mouth and the undigested material will, will remove from the anus. And this is the grasshopper, also the stand. They have the mouth and the esophagus and the cross either. And the, in the grasshopper, there is a there is a grain called the gastric pouch. Gastric pouch can release the enzyme and the stomach and the intensity and the anus. So they also have the two open. And the birds also the same from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, crop, either, and the intensity and the anus. So most animals has a complete, complete, com, complete digest, digestive systems. 
from the mouth to the anus. Okay, so this coated the endometrial canal, endometrial canal. So the digestive tray also coated the endometrial canal. So the following, I want to introduce the mammalia. Mammalia, like the human, is the high highest level of the animals. So the mammalia digestive systems consist of the endometrial canal and the very accessory glands and the secreted the digestive, di digestive enzyme into the canal through the ducts. So there are several some there are several terms. Usually we 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 can say the periostalysis. Periostalysis is the movement of the of the digestive systems. So periostalysis is a rhythmic wave of the contraction of the smooth muscle in the world of the canal. And the, the like the esophagus or intensity, they they will periostalysis. They will move move the move the foods forwards. So the periostalysis is often to see to be found in the by the smooth muscle in the world of the digest, di, di, digestive systems. They will push the food along. And uh, in the in the in the digestive systems. There are some muscle can regulate the foods. So, for example, in the the food from the esophagus to the stomach, they are sphincter. Sphincter is a muscle, mu muscular ring like wave, wave. They will control the foods, and the, when the food is ready, they will open in the sphincter and make the food move down. So, the sphincter is a muscular ring like wave, regulate the passage material between the specialized chamber such as like the from the esophagus to the stomach from stomach to the to the small intensity so this control control the food to move down is by the sphincters and in the digestive systems digestion systems there are several accessory grains including the salivary grain salivary grain in the mouth they will salivary grain will release the amylase to digest the carbon hundreds and the pancreas is very important digestive organs and the liver and the gallbladder. I will introduce the function of this brain later. So in the digest in the digestion in the digestion, the first the first the first action is the chewing and the swallowing. So when we intake the foods, the foods in the mouth, they needed to we needed to take around it takes around the five to ten seconds to chew in and the swallowing and the foods will, be, will move from the mouth to the esophagus. So the chewing and the swallowing, it takes to about, about the five to 10 seconds and the food to pass down the esophagus to the stomach. And then in the stomach, the food will, 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 will stay in the stomach about the two to, to six hours being the partially digest. So in the mouth, the food take will take around the five to 10 minutes to chewing and the swallowing. And the, to, in the stomach, the foods will, will stay in the stomach of, uh, around the two to six hours. And the finally digestion will occur in the small intensity. So the small intensity is an important organ for the digestion. So in the small intensity, the foods will it take around the five to six hours. And the, uh, about the 12 to 24 hours, the I, Undigested material will pass through the large intensity, and the phases are expelled through the anus. Okay, so this is the pro the process and the time. The it's not so accurate, but but it take along along the time two to six in the stomach, five to six in the small intensity, and the twelve to twenty six hours in the say the undig the undigested material will be will be is paired through the anus. <clears throat> so this is the organ, the, the grains over the organ of the digestion in the human. So in the mouth, there are there is a important there is a important salivary grains. So in the mouth there is a tongue. Tongue is very important because tongue can miss the miss the food well in the mouth. And the parotidal grain and the subligular grain and the submandibular grain. So this, this grain co compose the salivary grain and release the enzyme and release the some, some 
some mucin. Mucin is a is a liquid. Is a liquid that can protect the protect the mouth. Okay, so the salivary gland, and this is oral cavity, and the from from the the food from mouth through the pharynx, and then this is the esophagus esophagus, and the move from the esophagus through the pero, pero, perosteresis move to the stomach stomach. So the stomach has a two two junction. One is connected with the esophagus. One is connected with the small intensity duodenum. So there are two sphincter here. The, the connection between the stomach and the esophagus called the cardiac orifice, cardiac orifice. And the, the connection between the stomach and the duodenum called the pyloric sphincter, pyloric sphincter. Okay, so from the stomach, they will connect the move to the small intensity. Small intensity, there are three parts, including the, the, the first part is the duodenum, okay? So the duodenum, gelium, and the ileum. So the small intensity, and then to the large intensity, and the finally to the anus. So large intensity, the end of the large intensity linked with the anus is the retin, retin, okay? And the, the small intensity and the, the large intensity they, layer is the junction here. This junction also the second. And the, the end of the second layer is like a finger-like structure called the appendix, appendix, okay? So this is the, the digestive system in the humans. Also, also there is the liver. The liver will, will release the, some enzyme, some, some, some buyer, by, by some buyer to to support it to to digest the, the fatty acid the, the fatty acid and the, the gallbladder gallbladder is the organ to to collect the buyer and the pancreas pancreas locates and behind behind the stomach pancreas pancreas will release the several hydrolytic enzyme to the small intensity and the, to to digest the many 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 different molecules. Okay, so this is the structure and the the and the the, the organ of for the of the di, di, digestion in human. So we can see the word in here. So the digestion begin the in the oral cavity. So both physical and the chemical digestion of the food begin in the mouth. So in the mouth, the food in the mouth will be chewing, and the teeth of the very shape cut smash the foods to the small small pieces and then easier to swallow in. So the, the mouth also is, is very important for the, for the digestion because we intake the foods and the, the foods, maybe they are several sharp angles and easy to, not easy to swallow in. So in the chewing and the, the tongue, we will miss the food well. And we also have the saliva. Saliva can miss, the, miss with the foods and the make the foods easy to be swallowed. So the presence of the food in the oral cavity tr triggered by nerve refresh and uh, cause the salivary gland to, to deliver the saliva to the oral, to the mouth. Okay, okay. So, make the, so the mouth is the beginning of the digestion. So we can see the structure of the mouth. So this the incisor, the teeth, the incisor, this canine, this molar, is the wisdom, wisdom tooth, and this is the tongue. So there are there there are two two salivary gland here, and the opening saliva opening. So when the foods in the mouth, they will stimulate, they will induce the saliva saliva re release to the mouth, and then the foods will be digest partially digest, and the, the tooth will grind the foods and fragment the foods to more small pieces. And the and the mist wheel with the saliva and the easy to be swallowed. Okay, so the opening of the salivary gland here and the least salivary gland and the least tongue and the least tooth, different different teeth here. And uh, we can see the different type of the animal. The 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 structure of the tooth are different. So you can see here. So this is the carnivores. Carnivores like the dog and the cat families, they have the, 
large canine and the large pointed incisor and the canine and the jagged premolar. This is jagged, jagged like a premolar and the molar structure here. So the carnivores have uh, this type of the teeth in the mouth. And the herbivores, herbivores always eat the grass or eat the small, small trees. So they, they have the very, very, very well, well developed molar and the premolar. So the premolar, premolar and the molar reach the surface to grind the plants. Incisor and the canine modified for biting the piece of the, so the incisor just modified to, to modified for biting the piece of the plants. And the, some of the herbivores like the canine, like the canine here. So some, some of the herbivores, the canine or, or did not find, did not find. And the human, human have uh, 32 teeth and the four bread like incisor, incisor and a pair of the canines and the four premolar and the six molar. Okay, so this is for the, for the omnivores, human are omnivores. So this I just show the different, different type of the animal depends on they, what, kind of, what kind of the food they want, they, they, they intake. Like the carnivores, herbivores, the, the structure of the teeth are different. So the saliva, saliva is a, it's very important in the, for the digestion. Saliva is a beginning, is a beginning and the occur in the mouth. So the saliva contain, saliva contains a slippery glycoprotein called the mucin. So the mucin can protect the mouth because sometimes we can, we intake, we, we eat the foods and the foods are very sharp. So easy to make the, make the, the inside the mouth easy to, to make the, make, make it hurt. So saliva can, saliva can protect the soft lining of the mouth from the abrasion and the lubricate the food for easy to swallow in. And the saliva also contain the buffer. Buffer can prevent the, the tooth decays by neutral, neutralize the acid in the mouth. And also in the saliva also contain the antibacterial agents. So when, when we eat, eat, eat some foods, it, maybe the foods has some bacteria or is not so clean. So the saliva also can contain the antibacterial agent that can kill the bacteria and make the foods easy, clean and safe to intake. Okay, so the saliva the fun content has a function like, like the slippery glycoprotein easy to swallow in and the buffer to protect the, the, the tooth and also has the antibacterial agents. And uh, in the mouth, the carbohydrate will be primary digestion. So chemical digestion of the carbohydrate is the main source of the, of the energy begin in the oral cavity. So the saliva contains the amylase, salivary amylase. This is an enzyme for hydro, hydrolysis of the starch and the glycogen into the small polysaccharide or disaccharide, maltose. So in the carbohydrate will be primary initially digested by the, by the amylase in the mouth. So the starch and the glycogen will be digested into the small molecule, sm smaller, but not the monomer, it's smaller po polysaccharide and the disaccharide, like the maltose. And the, the tongue in the mouth also be very important. So the tongue will test the foods, will, they, they test the foods and the, in the chewing, the tongue will miss the foods and the make the foods into a bowl. We call it the bolus, bolus, okay? So the tongue will test the food and the manipulate during the chewing and the shape of the food into the bowl called the bolus. And the bolus is easy to swallow. So the tongue will push the bolus back in the oral cavity and into the pharynx, okay? And the pharynx, pharynx in, is the important junction between because in the pharynx, there are two open, openings. One is for the esophagus, the other is for the trachea. Trachea is a wide pipe. So in the pharynx, there are two openings. So one is for the esophagus, the other is for the trachea, it's for the air, okay? So in the, in the pharynx, there is an opening, it's called the glottis. And the, the blockage by the, by a cartilage, cartilaginous, is a cartilage-like, it's so 
called the epiglottis. So the glottis and the epiglottis will control the opening of the trachea and the control the food safely in, move into the esophagus, not into the trachea. If the food into, into the trachea, they will cause the very serious, un, uncomfortable, and maybe some it will induce the inflammation of, of the lung. So the mechanism normally ensure the bolus will guide into the in, entrance of the esophagus and not direct down into the white, white pipe. So the epiglottis is very critical in the, in, in the, in the swallowing. Some, some patients, some people have the problem in the normally, normal function of the epiglottis. So they, they eat the foods, eat the foods will move into the white pipe, trachea will cause the serious problem. So how the, how the epiglottis to control the, to control the food swallowing. So when the people <coughs> not swallowing, the esophageal sphincter muscle contracts and the, and the epiglottis is up. So the glottis, glottis is open. So the airway, airway is, is open. So no, no swallowing, no, no food intake. The esophagus sphincter muscle contract and the epiglottis up and the cover, cover the cover, glottis open and the airway is closed. And the, when the food bolus reaches the pharynx, the larynx will be up and the epiglottis will cover the glottis and, and the cross the trachea. And the, the esophagia, esophagia sphincter will release and the, bol the bolus will enter the esophagus, okay? So then the, be, because the air, the, the trachea has been covered by the epiglottis, so the food will not enter the, the, the trachea, the food will enter, enter the e e esophagus. So in the meantime, the larynx move down and the, the, the trachea will, will reopen and the, the food will, will move, move to the stomach using the periostatasis. Periostatasis I, I introduced before, like the smooth movement from the upper to the lower of the esophagus. So there is a figure here. So in the, in the swallowing, the no, if, no foods in the mouth is not swallowing. The esophage, there is a sphincter here. So in the, in the, la, in the esophagia, there is a trachea opening and also is a, is a esophagus. So there is a blood glottis here. So in the, in the esophagus, there is an important structure called the smooth, there is a sphincter control, sphincter control the food, enter the esoph esophagus. So it's not swallowing, not swallowing the esophageal sphincter contracted. So the esophagus is closed and the trachea is open. So esophageal sphincter muscle contracted and the glottis is open. So the air can, can, in, can move into the lung by the trachea. So no swallowing, the airway is, is open. And the, when the food move to the pharynx, the larynx, the larynx will move upwards, will cover the trachea. So the epiglottis cover the glottis and the prevent the food into the trachea. And then the esophageal sphincter will, re, will be released, will be opened, and the food will slide into the esophagus. Okay. So if the food enter, reach the pharynx, the larynx move upwards, epiglottis cover the glottis and the prevent the food into the trachea. Esophageal sphincter release and the food will slide, will move into the esophagus. And then the food from upper of the esophagus to the lower of the esophagus reach the stomach using the periostatasis, okay? I, there is a slide to show the, how, how the muscle control the periostatasis here. So the, the food enter the esophagus and uh, we will move down to the stomach. So the esophagus conduct the food from the pharynx to the stomach by the periostatasis. So, so this term is very important in the biology, like the smooth movement of the food. So how the, how the, how the periostasis occur in the esophagus? So there are two muscles 
control the periosteresis. So the muscle at the top of the esophagus are striated and the under, they are two different muscles. I will show you the slide here. So in the esophagus, there are two different types of the muscle. In the inside is a circular muscle layer and the outside is a long, longitudinal muscle layers. So there are two, two, two types of the muscle in the esophagus. So if the bolus in the esophagus, they are, we can see there are two, two different muscles here. The outside is longitudinal. The inside is a circular muscle. So in the upper parts of the bolus, the circular muscle, circular muscle will be contracted. So the circular muscle contracted and then will squeeze the foot, move, move down. And in the, in, in the, in front of the bolus, the longitudinal muscle will be contracted, will shorten the distance between the bolus and the stomach. Okay, so repeated that it's the upper, upper parts, circular mu muscle contracted, squeeze the full move down, and the longitudinal muscle before, before the bolus, this, this pass reduce the distance between the bolus and the stomach. And finally, finally the food will be moved into the stomach. So the release muscle, circular muscle contracted, passageway push the bolus down, and the, the longitudinal Longitudinal muscle contract, shortening the passage. And then finally, the food will reach the stomach. Okay, so this is called the periostasis, periostasis in the stomach using the, these two types of the muscle. One is the circular muscle, the other is long, longitudinal muscle layers. And then I, the following, I will introduce the what happened in the stomach. So the stomach, the function of the stomach is to store the foods and the, perform the prime preliminary digestion. So the stomach locates in the upper ab abdominal cavity, just, uh, just upper the diaphragm, okay, diaphragm. So the, the stomach can store the two, two liter of the foods and the fluid and the store the entire meals. So the stomach also can secrete the, the digestive fluid, go, cause the get reduced, get reduced. Get reduced means like the, including the HCL and including the pepsin is an enzyme by the stomach. So the stomach can secrete the di digestive fluid and the miss the secretion with the foods. And then they will digest the, the, the protein, preliminary digest, digest, digestion of the protein in the stomach. So the gastric juice secreted by the epithelium not in the deep pits in the stomach words. So, in the stomach, there is a high concentration of the hydro hydrochloride. Hydrochloride is, is a HCl. So the so the pH value of the of the stomach juice is about the two. So this is very acid. It's acidic enough to digest iron iron nails. So the this acid disrupts the extracellular matrix and the bind bind the cell together. So in the stomach, the pH value is very low, it's around the two, and the condition is as is an acidic condition. So this condition can kill the bacteria that are swallowing with the foods. And in the stomach, there is an important in the get in the juice, there is an important enzyme called the pepsin. The pepsin is a protease. The pepsin can recognize two, two, two amino acids, is a phenylalanine and the tyrosine. So the pepsin can digest at the site of the phenylalanine and the tyrosine. So this enzyme can hydrolyze of the protein. So the pepsin can work well in the acid environments and the black pe peptide bond adjacent to the specific amino acid. Specific amino acid is a uh, phenylalanine and the tyrosine. And the, and the digested the protein to small polypeptide, not amino acid, okay? So the pepsin in the gastric juice can digest the, the, the protein very close to the phenylalanine and the tyrosine and the produce the small polypeptide. So the pepsin secreted, secreted in, the pepsin secreted by the, 
by the ore of the stomach. But the, initially, the, the ore secreted the pepsin is in, in the inactive form, called the pepsinogen. So you can see if, uh, if a GEN at the end of the words means the inactive, is an inactive form. So the, so the stomach ore released the pepsinogen. And then there is a chief cell in the stomach ore will, will release the HC, the enzyme to, to activate the pepsinogen to pepsin. So we can see the figure here. So the, this is the, the stomach ore. This is the stomach ore here. So they are pit here. So there are two different cells. The, the red one is mucus cells, and the, the orange one is chief cells, and the, the yellow one is perietal cells. So in the in the deep of the pit in the stomach, there is a the the chief cell will release the pepsinogen. Pepsinogen is an inactive form of the pepsin. So I and the perietal cell will release the HCl. So the pepsinogen will be digested, will be cleavaged by the HCl and make the inactive to the active. So the pepsinogen will be, it, it is an inactive form, will be digested by the HCl, cleavaged by the HCl to produce the pepsin. So the pepsin is an active enzyme, active protease. And the pepsin also can, can digest more pepsinogen to produce pepsin. So the, the step three, we call it the positive, the positive feedback, positive feedback, feedback. So the initially, the pepsinogen will be activated by the HCL. And the finally, the, to produce the pepsin, and the pepsin can positive feedback to digest more pepsinogen to pepsin, okay? So the perietal cell, perietal cell in the pit secrete the hydro, hydrochloric acid and the convert the pepsinogen to active pepsin. And then the, the pepsin can digest more, more, can activate more pepsinogen molecule. So this, this pathway, this process in the biology is very often to see the positive feedback system. So in the biology system, we can see the positive feedback produce more. And the, if the inhibit, we call it the negative feedback. So there are two different feedback. One is positive, the other is negative in the biology systems. But in the stomach, the pepsin can produce more, more, pepsin, more activated enzyme called the positive feedback. So the stomach can defense. So the stomach is very, the stomach condition is very acidic. So the stomach coating of the mucus secreted by the epithelium and they can produce the stomach line, line, lining from the, from the HCL digestion damage. So the, there is a disease called the gastric ulcer. Gastric ulcer means the, some damage, some, some hurts, some, some, some damage in the stomach lining. So the gastric ulcer in, in the stomach lining caused by the acid tolerance bacteria, had it, had, had your better pyroline. So ulcer, ulcer, get your ulcer caused, caused by the HP bacteria. HP bacteria is very special bacteria. They, it, can, it can live in the acidic condition. So the ulcer often treated with the antibiotics. Okay, so get your ulcer is a lesion or damage in the stomach line. So by the acid, acid tolerance bacteria, HP. So the ulcer often treated with the antibi antibiotics. So the stomach will be tuning every every twenty seconds. So the all the nutrient all the, all the all the nutrient will be break down by such as the as, as the chem, chemi. So the foods move 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 from the esophagus to the stomach. In the stomach, they will. They will use the HCL, use the pepsin to, to pre preliminary digest the, the foods. And the finally, the foods will convert it to the acid chemi, chemi here. So the acid chemi is, a, is, is ready for use, for use in the in 
intensity. So the, as the kidney will move down to the small intensity, okay? So most of the time of the stomach is close of the either ends. We, we told them before, there are two ends. One is the stomach junction, the junction between the stomach and the esophagus. The other is the junction between the stomach and the small intensity. So the opening esophagus and to the stomach called the cardiac orifice. And the other is a pyloric sphincter. Pyloric sphincter is control the food from the stomach to small intensity. So opening from the stomach to small intensity is the pyloric sphincter. So after the, the foods in the stomach be digested and converted the food to, to as the kimi, the pyloric sphincter will, will, will open, will be opened and the acid kimi will move from the stomach to small intensity. So about the two to six hours after the, after for the stomach to be to, to empty. So then the acid kimi will move to the small intensity. So the small intensity is the major organ for the digestion and the absorption. So in the human, the, the, length, the length of the small intensity about, about the six meters. And the, the small intensity is the longest section of the elementary canal. So in the digest, digest the canal, the small intensity is the long, the long, the longest part. So the most of the most of the enzymatic hydrolysis of the food, the macromolecular, and the most of the absorption of the nutrient in the into the blood occur in the small intensity. So this means the small intensity is the I can say that is the most important part of the digestion. So because the the digest the foods into the monomer and the absorption of the foods occur in the small intensity. So in the small intensity, the first 25 centimeter called the duodenium. Duodenium, the acid kimi from the stomach will miss the digestive, digestive juice in the duodenium. In, in the duodenium. So in the, in the duodenium, there are several many, there are many digestive enzymes released from the pancreas, liver, gallbladder, and the brains of the small intensity ores. They are mi missed here. So you can see here. So this is a 25 centimeter in the beginning, in the beginning of the small intensity called the duodenium. So the duodenium, there are the liver, liver will release the bile into the duodenium. And the gallbladder is a, is a collector, is an organ, is a to, to collect the bile. And the, as the kidney from the stomach will, will move into the into a duodenium. And the pancreas, pancreatic juice, pancreas is an important digestive organ. So it releases several enzymes into the duodenium. So the duodenium is the most important part in the, in the small intensity because in the duodenium, there are many, many different, different enzymes, different different molecules like the bicarbonate, they will neutralize the acid as the kimi here. So the pancreas produce the several hydrolytic enzyme and the alkaline is a alkaline solution like the bicarbonate will buffer the acidity from the kimi. So they will miss here. So this is a very important part in the digestion is the duodenium in the small intensity. So the liver is, is a over the fun, the action, the action of the liver in the digestion. So the liver perform a wide variety of the important function. So the liver will produce the will produce the bile. So the bile is stored in the gallbladder until your needs. So it contains the bile salts. Bile salts, bile salts are detergents. They can aid the, the aid the digestion and absorb the fats. So the buyer also contain the pigments, like uh, the so the pigment is a byproduct of RBC, is the red blood cell destruction in the liver. So the so the old or senescent RBC will be will be destructed in the in the liver. So the 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 pigment the the buyer the buyer pigment from the RBC. So the buyer pigment are eliminated from the body is the basis. So you can see the face is covered, it's from the bile, bile pigments. 
and the, the digestion of the carbohydrate, as you, as I mean, mentioned before, the car, the the carbohydrate initially digested in the mouth, the saliva. Saliva contain the car amylase, right? So the digestion of the starch and the glycogen began by the salivary amylase in the oral cavity and the continuous in the small intensity. So the pancreas, pancreas can release the amylase, hydrolyze, hydrolyze the starch and the glycogen to and the small polysaccharide into the disaccharide. So the pancreas also pancreas also released the release the amylase and the hydrolyzed the starch and the glycogen to the di, di, disaccharide. A family of the disaccharide, disaccharide also is a little bit larger and cannot be absorbed. So the disaccharide should be digested to the mono, monosaccharide. So the disaccharide can, should be digested by the disaccharides. Disaccharides is an enzyme to convert the, the disaccharide to the monosaccharide. So the hydrolyzed the, each disaccharide into the monosaccharide. There are two important disaccharides. One is the maltose. Maltose can split the maltose into the two glucose. Glucose is a monomer, so we can uh, the, we, the, we can absorb the glucose. And the sucrose, sucrose, sucrose can split the sucrose into the glucose and the fructose. So, so converted the, in the small intensity, converted the. the Polysaccharide to the disaccharide, and the disaccharide can be catalyzed by the maltase or sucrose to produce the glucose and the fructose. And the glucose and the fructose are monomer, so can be absorbed from the small intensity words. So the intensity epithelium can be site for the sugar absorption because in the in small intensity, all the all the all the poly carbohydrate can be converted to the monomer, monomer, okay? And uh, the protein, protein preliminary digested in the stomach, right? So in, in the stomach, the protein can be digested to the, to the, to the small, small, small peptide, not a monomer. But in the small intensity, the, the small small peptide can be converted to the amino acid and it can be absorbed in the small intensity. So the several enzymes in the duodenum dismantle the polypeptide to the amino acid. So there are several different enzymes here. In the stomach, we know the enzyme is pepsin. Pepsin can 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 cut, can digest the phenylalanine and the tyrosine very close to these two amino acids. In the small intensity, there are three 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 proteins. The first one is the uh, trypsin and the chymotrypsin. Trypsin can recognize the lysine and the arginine. Chymotrypsin can recognize the tyrosine and the tryptophan. So they can digest the, the, the large polypeptide to small one, not a monomer, okay? And the, the other enzyme is a uh, dipeptidase. Dipeptidase attached to the intensity line and the supply the small, small chain. And finally, the, there are two important enzymes. One is a carboxyl peptidase, the other is amino peptidase. Carboxyl peptidase can remove the amino acid from the C terminal. As we know, the peptide contains the two, two functional, two functional chain, two functional group. One is a carboxyl group, another is an amino group. So in the small intensity, the carboxyl peptidase can remove the amino acid from the C terminal, and the amino peptidase can remove the amino acid from the N terminal. So the carboxyl peptidase and the amino peptidase can supply of one amino acid from the C terminal and the N terminal. And the finally, the small peptide can be converted into the amino acid for the absorption. Okay, so the in the small intensity, the peptide can be finally can be can be converted to the amino acid and for the absorption. So there are several enzymes here, trypsin and the chymotrypsin and, and the dipeptidase. And the finally, the C terminal peptidase and the N terminal peptidase converted the, the peptide to the from the C terminal and N terminal to the amino acid. So, so there is a figure here. So you you can see the 
So the many, many of the protein digestive enzymes, such as the amino peptides, amino peptides secreted by the intensity abacidian, and the tryptine, chymotrypsin, and the commotion peptides are derived from the pancreas. So and this is the different, different parts release the different, different enzymes. So the amino peptides from the epithelium of the small intensity, and the tryptine, chymotrypsin, and the carboxyl peptides secreted in the inactive form in, by the pancreas. Inactive form, like, the, like I, I mentioned in the stomach, like the pepsin, the inactive form is the pepsinogen. So the wall of the stomach wall release the pepsinogen, and the, then pepsinogen is inactive form, can be converted to the pepsin, and the positive feedback. So this is also the same. So the, the, pancre the pancreas release the tripsinogen, and the carboxyl peptides precursor called the pro carboxyl peptides, and the chymotrypsinogen. So these three, these three enzymes from the pancreas are in inactive form. And then some induced inactive form to the active form. So there is another intestinal enzyme it's called the antennal peptides. Antennal peptides derived from the intense, intestinal words. So the membrane bound internal peptides, they will, they can, this enzyme can catalyze the inactive Tryptosynogen to the trypsin. And then the trypsin can positive to induce and also can induce the procarboxyl peptides to carboxyl peptides is active form. And the chymotrypsinogen to the active chymotrypsinogen and the, to catalyze the digestion of the protein. Okay, so the active trypsin, then active the other two, the other two. Okay, so this is the process for the for the enzyme activation in the small intensity. So in this, in this two slide, oh, oh, I want to introduce, I want to make clear the stable enzyme involved in the protein digestion, okay? So amino peptides from the intensity and the trypsin, chymotrypsin, and the carboxyl peptides from the pancreas. And the initial release is inactive form, like, and the internal peptides can catalyze the inactive tryptosynogen to the trypsin. And then trypsin can catalyze the, the other two to make a more active enzyme, okay? And then the next one is the digestion of the nuclear acid. The nuclear acid, like the, including the DNA and the RNA, right? The OC, the, the OC, the OC nuclear acid. So the digestion of the nuclear acid involved in the hydro, hydrolytic assault similar to the protein. So a tin of the enzyme called the nucleus, okay? So the nucleus is the enzyme to catalyze the digestion of the nuclear acid. So the nucleus hydrolyzes the DNA and RNA into the components of the nucleotide. As we know, the nucleotide, including the three parts, is a base, is a phosphate group, is a five, is a five, pen, five pentose, is a pentose, right? So Need the, the nucleus needed to hydrolyze the DNA RNA into their component, and that the component can be absorbed for absorbed by the small intensity. So the other hydrolytic enzyme then break the nuclear acid down to for the nucleoside, nitrogenase base, and the sugar and the phosphate. So like the nitrogenase base and the sugar is a pentose, and the phosphate is a small molecule, so can be absorbed. And the digestion of the fat. Near, un, until now, the fat can not digest by, by the stomach, not digest by the small intensity. So here, the fat will be, will be digested into the fatty acid. But the fat is not easy to be digested because fat is not water soluble, so needed to be emulsification. So make, make the fat easy to be to be soft in the water and the enzyme can be cat can be used to can be used to cat catalyze the, the digestion. So near all the fat in the meal reach the small intensity undigested. So this is different, is is a different parts, different from the carbohydrate and the protein. So normally the fat molecule are insoluble in water. So this is the big problem for the fat digestion. 
but bio salt. Bio salt really secreted by from from the gallbladder into the duodenum. They will coat it, coat the fatal droplet, and uh, this this process called the emulsification. Emulsification. So the large surface area of the, this small droplet is exposed to the lipase, and then after the emulsification, the fat the fat can be slightly maybe in maybe maybe soluble in the water, and the, the lipase is an enzyme can hydrolyze the fat molecule into the glycerol fatty acid and the glycerol, and the glycerol fatty acid and glycerol can be absorbed by the by the small intensity. So you can see here. So the TG triglyceride are break down to the fatty acid and the monoglyceride by the lipase. So this the triglyceride can be break down to the fatty acid and the monoglyceride. And then the small molecule, the monomer can be absorbed by the small intensity. And the fatty acid and the monoglyceride can be absorbed by the small intensity. And then in the small intensity, the epithelial cell, both of them will be will be composed, will be get together to the triglyceride and the form the chiromicron and the into the lactia, into the lactia and the move to the, 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 the part of the body. So the monoglyceride and the fatty acid diffuse into the epithelial cell and the reform into the triglyceride. And then the triglyceride are incorporated into the chiromicron. Chiromicron enter the lactia are carried by the limb by the limb to in, enter the limb, limb, limb resistance and then can, can, can be carried out, can carry to another part. So this is for the fat digestion. So most of the digestion occur in the duodenum. And the, in the, I mentioned in the, in the maybe, maybe the, the, the slide, there are three parts of the small intensity. The first one, the first 25 centimeter is duodenian, and the other, the other two sections are zetunian and the ileum. So the zetunian and the ileum function mainly in the absorption of the nutrient and the water. So the first part is for the digestion, and the zetunian and the ileum function for the absorption of the nutrient and the water. So to enter the body, the nutrient in the lumen and the pass through the line of the digestive tract. The small intensity has a very huge surface area around the 300 meter square, roughly the size of the tennis court. I just mentioned the if if you you can count the the area, the small intensity has a huge surface area around the 300 meter square. So there is a table to to make the make the collection of the enzyme. So in the carbohydrate, carbohydrate in the digestive system. From the starch is a polysaccharide, and the pancreatic amylase to convert it to the starch to the maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide, and then the disaccharide using the maltose, sucrose, and the lactase to convert it to the disaccharide to the monosaccharide. And the monosaccharide is a monomer of the carbohydrate, and it can be absorbed. And the protein, protein in the small intensity, the polypeptide can be digested by the Tryptin and the pimotrypsin to small small polypeptide, and the small polypeptide or dipeptide can be catalyzed by the amino peptides, carboxypeptides, and the dipeptides to the amino acid. Amino acid is the monomer of the protein, so it can be absorbed by the small intensity. And the nucleic acid also, including the DNA and the RNA, they both of them can be digest can be digested by the nucleus. To the nucleotide, and the nucleotide can use in the other enzyme to catalyze the digestion of the nucleotide to the nitrogenous base, sugar, and the phosphates, and they can be absorbed by the small intensity. And the fat, fat globular, need, need to be emulsification by the bio salt to increase the solubility, and the, to fat drop it emulsified, and the fat drop it can be digested by the lipase and the to form to, to release the fatty acid and the glycerol and the to form the chiromicron and the to use in the lactyl lymphocyte system to move to the other parts. So this is the enzyme digestion in the small intensity. 
And then I want to introduce the structure of the small intensity. So the anomalous surface of the small intensity is a adapt adaptation greatly increased in the rate of the neutron associates. So the small intensity as, a, as shown in the previous slide, uh, the total, 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 total area around the 300, 300 meters square. So because the, the, the small intensity, the major function is to absorb the, the nutrient into the body. So the large circular force, so they are in the, in, in the surface of small intensity, there are many, many finger light projections called the VD. And the each VD using the microscope, you can see that there are many, many small, small VD called the micro VD in, in the VD. So the large circular force in the finger like projection called the VD. Mm -hmm. And the, each VD, each virus has uh, many, many micro VD on the, on the surface. No. <coughs> Is okay. So can I keep keep going? Yes, bro, please. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I if you if if you have any questions, you can tell me or the student or the professor can let me know, okay? So the so the penetrating of the core of the virus is a net. In the core of the virus, there is a net of the microscope, microscopic blood vessel, cap capillary, and the single vessel is a lymphatic system called the lacteal. Lacteal, okay. We can see the structure here. So this is the structure of the small intensity. So in the in the world of the small intensity, there are many many v VD VD here. So this is intensity world, okay. And in the in, in the virus, we can see the many micro micro VD. So in the VD, there they are there are the small there are the capillary network here, and in the central part, the, the yellow one is the lacteal assistance, lacteal assistance. So the nutrient, the monomer, can can be absorbed from the from the outside of the it enter enter into the small the capillary work, capillary network, and then the fatty acid that can move into the let your systems and then carry carry the material, carry the nutrient to the to the whole body. Okay. So how the how the new how the material move into the move into the move into the capillary, how the material move into the let your systems. So they are different different ways including the passive transportation. So the passive tra transportation, it depends on the, on the concentration. So through the concentration gradient, the material can move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration, concentration parts, so called the passive transportation. So such as the flutters. So the transport of the nutrient across the epithelial cell, down layer concentration gradients from the lumen to the small intensity epithelial cells into the capillary. So this is called the passive transportation. So the material using the passive transportation by the concentration gradient, they don't need the ATP, don't need the energy. But some material are very pre precious. So we, although the, the concentration is not higher, but we needed to reclaim into the body. So Another is called the active transportation, like the amino acid, small peptides, vitamin and the glucose. They, this, this material are very important for, for, for our body. So we cannot, so our body cannot exclude them. So these material are pumped against the concentration gradient by the epithelial membrane, called the active transportation. So the active transportation allow the intensity to absorb a much higher proportion of the nutrient in the intensity. Then would there be possible pace diffusion? Okay. So the active transportation needed to you to to use the ATP, use the energy, and they can against the concentration gradients. So the glycerol and the fatty acid can be absorbed by the epithelium and the re recombine into the fats. So the fats are mixed with the cholesterol and the coated with the special protein to form the small globular 
called the chylomicron, chylomicron. So the capillary and the vein drain the nutrient away from the VD, converge into the hepatic portal vessel. So the, so the small, the, the material enter into the capillary and then converge into the hepatic small, hepatic portal vessel, and then to the liver, okay? And the fatty acid with from the chylomicron enter the lacteal, lacteal systems. And, and, and then the, the, the next part of the digestion is the large intensity. So the required of the water is the major function of the large intensity. So the large intensity also called the colon. Colon, colon, colon is a part to, to, to recreate the water. So the junction between the large intensity and the small intensity, the junction between this, 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 these two parts is a T-shaped junction because the, the shape like the T. So there is a splinter control the movement of the material. So the T-shape is just called the second, second. So there is a second between, is a junction between the small intensity and the large intensity. So there is a finger-like extension called the appendix. Appendix, the function of the appendix is not so clear, but there, there is a, there, there is well known the appendix, append, there are several many macrophage or the immune cell will be, will, 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 will stay in the appendix. So they predict the appendix maybe make a minor contribution to the body defense, okay? So the appendix is a, is an organ, but the function is not so important. But there are paper reported that the appendix, there are some immune cell or your storage in the appendix. So make the minor contribution to the body defense. So the major function of the colon, the large intensity is to recover the water. So maybe a person every day, each day, we all, we all, we all, we all drink, we all intake seven liter of the liquid into the rumen of the, di of the digestive tract. And about the 90% about the of the water is reabsorbed. And the most the water are soaked in the small intensity and the, the rest in the colon. So the 90% of water will be, will be reabsorbed. And the most the water reabsorbed in the small intensity and the, the rest in the colon. So the digestive the waste, the basis become the more, more solid and the move, move along the colon by the periostatosis. So as, as mentioned before, about the 12 to 24 hours, the material, undigested material, will, re, will, from, will remove from the body. So the diarrhea is a term for the digestive problem resulting, resulting in the insufficient water is absorbed. And the constipation is too much water is absorbed. It's a, the basis is, is too solid, cannot be easy to, to expel to the body. So the diarrhea is insufficient water absorbed. Constipation is too much water is absorbed, and the, in the in the large intensity, there is another function is to there are many 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 bacteria, many flora of the most bacteria, harmless bacteria will live in live in the large intensity. So living in the large intensity, there is a rich flora of the harmless bacteria living in the large intensity and. The, they will produce some minor, minor, minor material like the vitamin or can, can support the body. So one of the most common inhabitants of the human colon is E. coli. E. coli is a favorable research, research organism. So the E. coli is, very, is a very common material for the research in, in the lab because it, all the genome of the E. coli is well, is well known. So we can make the genetic manipulation in the E. coli using the plasmi or some, some manipulation to produce the recombinant E. coli to produce the material for, for, for human means or for, for, for your research. So the byproducts of their metabolism, many colon material generate gas, including the methane and the H2S hydrogen stoppage. So the, the bacteria in the colon will, will pr produce, will generate 
generate the gases, including the methane. Methane is CH3, CH4, CH4, and the hydrogen sulfide is H2S. And the bacteria also produce the vitamin, including the biotin, folic acid, vitamin K, and the several B, B vitamin supplement is very critical supplement for our daily intake of the vitamin. So the so the bacteria, harmless bacteria living in the large intensity can can provide the vitamin for for for, for our needs. So this is the key junction. Okay. This is small intensity, the large intensity, and the, the junction between the the junction here is like the T shape. And the called the second in the large intensity. And at the end, this is a small finger like a like a like a structure called the appendix. Okay. And the, the phases, phases is the products of the digestion. Undigested material will be removed from the body. So the phases contain the masses of the bacteria, and the undigested material, including the cellulose, will be will be expelled, will be removed from the body. The cellulose fiber has no calorie value to the human. So the human cannot use the cellulose because we did not, we did not have the cellulose to, to digest the cellulose. So the phases may be also contain the excess salts and are excreted into the colon. And the, the terminal portion, the, the large intensity, the terminal portion of the large intensity is the racon. Racon is the storage for the phases. So the phases are stored in the racon. And the, between the racon and the anus, there are two sphincters to control who, when, when the phases can be, can be moved out. So the racon and the anus, they are two sphincters. One is involuntary, the other is uh, voluntary. So in the control, there are two sphincters, involuntary and voluntary can control when the anus will be open, will close, and the to, to, to control the faces move out. And uh, different animal ha has a different length of the digestive, digestive systems. So the length of the vertebrate digestive systems is also correlate, correlated with the diet. So as I mentioned before, the herbivores and the carnivores using the different food, food sources. One is for the one one is used the plant and the allergy, the other is for the meat. So the herbivores and the animals has and has all longer elementary canal. So you can see the two animals is a carnivores. Carnivores is for meat, is the meat, the food, the food from the meat. And the, and the herbivores, this is herbivores, koala, the, the plant is the, the plant is the food. So you can see there, the koala has a longer second, longer digestive system, di, di, digestive tray. So the herbivores has a longer elementary canal, elementary canal, because the vegetation is more difficult to digest than the meat because it contains the cell words. Because the herbivores intake the, the plant and the, the plant cell has a cell word. So it needed to take the long time. It needed to some bacteria to help, to help them to digest the cellulars. So the vegetation is more difficult to digest. So the herbivores has longer elementary canal than the, than the carnivores. And uh, in the vertebrae, they are, they are symbiotic microorganisms can help nourish the, the vertebrae. So much of the chemical energy in the digestion of herbivorous animals is contained in the cellulose of the plant and the woods. So animal can do not produce the enzyme to, to, to digest the cellulose. So many vertebrae solve the problem by housing the large population of the symbiotic bacteria and the protists in the elementary canal. So these, these, these two sentences, I just want to mention, the animal intake the, the plant, intake the cellulose, but although intake a lot amount of the cellulose, but there is no enzyme can digest. So some animals, some herbivores, they will house the large population of the symbiotic bacteria or protists 
in the elementary canals. So these microorganisms have an enzyme, can produce the enzyme to digest the cellulose to small, simple sugar and the, for the animal, and it can be absorbed. So, so the symbiotic bacteria of the rabbits and the some rodents living in the large intensity and the second. So the herbivores had long, longer elementary canal, had longer second and the longer, longer large intensity because they needed to the space for the bacteria grows inside. <coughs> so the most the nutrient absorbed in the small intensity, small intensity and the, the, this organism recover the nutrient from the fermentation. Fermentation in the large intensity, they can, they can fermentation and make the cellulose easy to be digest. So the koala, as I mentioned here, koala, he, he, koala has a longer second, has a longer second here. So the koala has a long, has an enlarged second and the symbiotic bacteria ferment, finally shredded the, 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 the leaves. So they saw so the herbivores, herbivores intake the plants. So they needed to have the well digested the, the plants and uh, digest the, the cellulose. So they evolution create a special, special way for the, for the herbivores called call the ruminant, ruminants or ruminants. So ruminants include the deer and the cattle and the sheep. So, when the cow first chews and swallowing the grass, so the lumen, like the cow, they, they, the cows has a full, full stomach. One is the lumen, the other is the reticulum, omasin, and the abomasin. So you can see the lumen, the cow has a, has a full, full stomach, full stomach. So the, after the cow intake the grass, right? The, the food will enter the lumen first. You can see the green line here. The, the food will enter the lumen and then enter the reticulum and then go back to the mouth and the rechewing. Rechewing, after the rechewing, the foods will go back to the good, go back, go back to the omasin and then to the abomasin and then to the small intensity, large intensity to the anus to expel. So the, this, this animal called the ruminant, ruminant. So the cow, we, we, swallow, this, we swallows the cut and the move into the omasin where the water is re, removed and then into the abomasin. Abomasin, the function of the abomasin is to digest by the cow's enzyme. And then the cellulose can be can be moved to the to the small intensity for the digestion and the absorption. So this animal has the full stomach, and the the the, the evolution to create the, this this special special way is for the cellulose digestion, and the, to make the animal can can get the get the enough energy, get the enough nutrient they needs, and then. I want to mention about the hormone control the digestions. So when the foods arrive the stomach, the hormone gastrin. Gastrin is a is a hormone released from the gastric gastric walls and released by the by the gastric walls. And uh, when the foods reach the stomach, they touch they they reach the there the gastric gastric juice. The gastrin will be released from the gastric wall. And the, the gastrin is a hormone. Hormone means the they need to using the bloodstream, using the bladder to the blood vessel to carry the hormone outside and go back up. So the, by the circulation back to the stomach to stimulate production of gastric juice. So the food reach the stomach. There is, the the gastrin will be released from the from the gastric wall and the back through the circulation go back to the stomach. Okay. So this this uh, positive positive stimulation. So by circulation back to the stomach to stimulate stimulate production production of the gastric juice. So the so the hormone hormone in the in the control control of the in the control of the digestion. 
So when the acid chemi reached the duodenum, when acid chemi arrived the duodenum, the hormone CCK is a whole cyto cytokine and the secreting secreted by the duodenum. So the hormone here, the CCK and the secretin released by the duodenum. The CCK, what's the CCK? CCK can stimulate the pancreatic digest enzyme and the bile from the gallbladder. So the, when the acid chemi reach the duodenum, the, the acid chemi will stimulate the CCK. CCK will stimulate the gallbladder contraction to release the bile acid, the, the bile salt. And also the CCK can, can stimulate the pancreas to release the digestive enzyme. And the secreting, secreting can, can stimulate the bicarbonate to the neutral. Secreting can stimulate the bicarbonate, bicarbonate to neutralize the acid chemi. So this is the hormone control the digestion. So the CCK released from the duodenum. And also there is another, when the chemi is rich in fat, if you, if the, you intake the people, a person intake the food and the containing the large fat, rich in fat, the higher CCK and the secreted by the duodenum will be produced. So the higher fat will, will produce the higher the CCK and the secreting. And the higher CCK both act on the stomach to inhibit the higher fat CCK it can inhibit the periostasis and the secretion of the gastric juice and the slowing the digestion. So this is the in inhibit. So the if the H the chemi contain the high fat, they will secrete large amount of the secreting and the CCK and the inhibit the stomach periostasis. So the so the slowing the digestion, slowing the digestion. So the homeostatic regulation of the cellular fuse. So we intake that after the digestion, the, the glucose will be, will be intake, will be absorbed. So there is the hormone control, the glucose, glucose homeostasis. This is well known. So, this, so the normal, I just very quickly to show the slide. So the glucose, after we, we, we eat the foods and the, the glucose will be, will be dramatically increased, the blood glucose. So the normally blood glucose around the 70 to 100, 100 110 milligram. So after the intake, the glucose, the glucose level will be increased. So the glucose after the eating, such as after the eating, the glucose will be increased. So the pancreas will, in, will release the insulin Insulin induce the smooth muscle cell or, or fatty cell, fat cell, or induce the liver to, to storage the glucose, converted the glucose to the glycogen and the storage the glucose as, as the glycogen. So the glucose, will, the label will reduce to the normal label. In the, in the fasting, after maybe a, maybe a person already hungry for a long time, the blood glucose label decrease. So the, so the pancreas will, will release the glucogen. Glucogen will, will, will catalyze the convert of the glycogen to the glucose and the, make the glucose they, blood glucose level in, increase to the 70 to 100. So this is control the glucose is for the homeostatic regulation of the cellular fuel. So the regulation, so the regulation, the appetite the consumption. So when we when we needed to eat, and uh, it, it when we needed to eat, and uh, are you really hungry or is it is it, already enough for you? So how to control? So in the in the hypothalamus in the brain, there is a center called the society center. So the is is it possible to a person possible to intake the more too too much foods? So called the overnourishment. So overnourish, overnourishment means uh, consuming more calories, more than we need, leading to obesity. And the obesity contribute to the several human disease, like the cancer, DM, dia, diabetes, and the heart attack and the stroke. So ap appetite regulating enzyme is very important to control our intake. 
control our body weight, even control the disease, the disease happen. So there, is a, there are several enzymes here, either granin. Granin is, is secreted by the stomach work and the trigger by the hunger and the loss weight and the granin level increase. So the granin can enhance, stimulate society center and the tell the tell 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 the people intake the more food. So when the when 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 people in the hunger or lost weights and the granny level will be increased and the to part to stimulate the society center to intake the more food. And the insulin secreted by the pancreas after the meal the insulin level increase. So the after the meal the insulin level increase the insulin also can inhibit tell the society center the, the, the energy, the glucose level is enough. So don't, don't intake the more food. So the insulin can inhibit the society center. And the leptin, leptin is, a, is a, like a, the molecule secreted by the adipose tissues, also can suppress, suppress the appetite. Another is the PYY, is the peptide, secreted by, by the small intensity after the meal. The appetite suppressant counter the granny. So this figure tells us the granny can stimulate the society center in and the tell the tell 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 the people intake more foods. And the insulin, PYY and the leptin inhibit the society center. Okay. So this the regulation of the appetite appetite and the food the consumption. And there is an animal. This animal is very, really, very really cute, I can say, and the all already extensively used in the research called the OB and the DB mice. So the genome OB, the mice with the mutation in the OB and the ODB gene grow much more mass and then the than the wild type of mice. So you can see the OB and the DB positive the average change in body mass about the 8.3 and the mutant, OB, OB mutant, the OB, OB mutant, they will produce the, make the mice bigger and the, and the, and the fade and, and the grow, grow faster. So the OB gene is very critical for the, for the obesity or the, for the, for the obesity related the disease, okay? And then, so this is for many research study, the, obesity and study the obesity related disease like the hypertension or like the atherosclerosis or using these mice to study. So the, we intake the foods and, the, and the make, a long, make, a very, make a little bit complicated the conversion of the foods to small molecules to intake. So the, finally, we need, to, we, we need to convert the, the foods to the energy, power the body. So the chemical energy powers the body. So the first one is ATP. ATP has the energy by oxidizing the small molecule. So the energy in foods is counted in the calories. So there is a term called the BMR, basal metabolite rates. Basal metabolite rates is, is the number of the calorie uh, resting animal. Resting animal required to fuel essential process in a given time. So how to count the BMR? BNR, we cannot count the ATP because the, in, in, the, in the living animal. So in the research, the biologists always count the O2 consumption because the, an animal using one liter of the oxygen needed 4.83 kilocalories from the foods. So we can count the how many O2, how many liter of the O2 consumption consumed in the animal and to count the BNR. So for example, a body used the 16 liter of the oxygen in an hour and the metabolic rate is 16 times the 4.83 and the total number is 77.28 kilocalorie per hour. So I just want to mention the converted, we intake the food and the digest the food using the enzyme and the take a long time Finally, we needed the energy to power our body. So body fat and the, and the fat of the diet, the healthy women, about 20% to 25% of their body weight in fat, and the 15 to 90% in the healthy men. 
So the women, the women had a higher, higher fit in the body. And the, the fit, those we cannot make, uh, make, make our essential fatty acid and uh, get from the diet. The, the fatty acid, like uh, the amino acid, we can divide the amino acid to the essential amino acid and the non-essential amino acid. The fatty acid the same, essential fatty acid and the non-essential fatty acid. And the non-essential means that we can produce by, by our cell. And the essential means that our body cannot produce and that we need to get it from outside. So there is a term called the RDA. RDA is a recomm recomm recommended dietary allowance. It's a mineral standard established by the nutritionist for preventing the nutrient deficiency. So there is, there is a table here that you, you, can, you can look. So the healthy effect of potential problem, the extremely, extremely low, low carbohydrate diet. If yeah. the, okay. Yes, Rob. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yes, Rob. You can stop here. Okay. 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 So we, Sorry, we I, already I, have I, question I, here, Prof. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, one student has already uh, ask question about the format on the chat room, Prof. Okay, no problem. Yes, well, actually, for uh, dietary needs and all about nutrition, we also have another uh, elective course, Prof. We call that as uh, nutrition and health. So we also covers the discussion on uh, RDA and then also basal metabolism rate and then uh, uh, needs for uh, nutrition along a human lifespan like that. So yeah, yeah maybe for, for the discussion on uh, digestive system uh, uh, until how the feces is excreted maybe like that yeah prof yeah and then the regulation uh, usually we will talk in uh, nutrition and health like that prof okay okay so there, there is one question already prof from dia uh, she would like to ask about vomit mechanism how can a human vomit the food what is the mechanism of vomiting uh, does the mammalia has the digestive system also, which has a sphincter that keeps the food from returning back, so uh, prevent to have vomiting rather than human usually do like that. Uh, you mean the the foods in the mammalia or something to to mm -hmm. to relate it to the health or some to vomit. Related to vomiting, prof. Vomiting. Vomiting. Yes. Uh, that's mammalia has a sphincter just like in human. Yeah. That will keep the food and then uh, prevent it to return back and then no vomit will occur. Maybe like that in mammalian. Yeah, the vomiting. Yeah. I, the vomiting is the. It's it's not it's always in the occur in the herbivores I think in mm. the yeah, herbivores animal need the vomiting because they intake the the plants or grass or something they have a cell wall so needed to vomiting to digest the cellulose but in the vomiting is it is it the vomiting like the cellulose digestion need the right yes yeah and in the I am not sure but in the human in the mammalian and in the human, we need to fermenting. Yeah, I think many products are fermented, right? Like the milk or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's healthy. But how can keep the the bacteria living in the in our body and uh, cannot be cannot be be killed or something? Ah. It's a good question, but I needed, I needed to find that some evidence to say that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll be okay, Prof. So I think I think uh, we also have some of uh, our colleagues 
from uh, human biology and physiology as well. Ibu Yulilina maybe would like to ask some question. Ibu Nurmasari and yeah. Bu Ratna. Bu Ola. Bu Ninul. Bu Ratna. Any question to Dr. Chen? Yeah, I think I speak a little bit. Crazy. So <laughs> yes. maybe, yeah, if mm -hmm. you don't have any question, you can send me the email or something. Also, you can ask you if my email is not so smooth, not, not workable, maybe send to the check. Check yes. your reply via the email is okay. Yeah, if you after after the work, after the late the course, maybe the all the professor and the student or faculty has mm -hmm. the, also can send me the email. I can reply. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Chen. Maybe this is very, yes, this is very interesting about the OB and DB genes. In yeah. only, this is only mutation only happen in mice, Prof? Yeah, happen in mice. In human, maybe mm -hmm. it is not, it's, uh, using the genetic manipulation so, so, so to make uh, the OB mutation. So this uh, animal model for study the obesity and the obesity related to human disease. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is only the model of yeah. uh, obesity. Yes. Okay. Any other question from class? Ada yang mau tanya lagi? No. Okay. From Haris. Haris, ayo, come on. You can you can ask uh, Dr. Chen. Haris. Yes, Haris. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Please. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, professor, I, I want to ask, uh, how is the carnivore separate the meat and the bone do to they eat the prey in the big chunk? Can he, excuse me, what, what the can he, can he do? Carnivores, prof. Carnivores. Carnivores? Uh-huh. Carnivores, the, the, the animal who eat meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How will they separate meal from the bone? Is that like that? It's Harris? a carnivores. Yeah, carnivores eat the meat. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. The meat. Can you specify the question, Harris? <laughs> the carnivores eat the meat. Maybe the mm -hmm. yeah, they use the meat as the food sources. They don't eat the grass or plants. Yeah. What is that? The question, Harris. Uh, I want to ask if how they separate the the meat and the bone because they eat a eat a, a big chunk like maybe the bone is still in the between the meat so they might swallow it into their oh separate the bone and the meat yeah I know. yes yes professor yeah. yes so how to separate the bone and the meat I eh. I think it depends on the different animals. Some some animals can can eat the bone. I think like the dog. <laughs> I I'm not sure. So so the bone and the meat. How to separate them? In the carnivores, they always use the different. I have mentioned the different tooth structure, teeth structure. You know, the carnivores has a special teeth structure here. Here, this one. So the carnivores, the teeth structure is different. They have the very 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 big uh, the the canine so they can spray the meats yeah you mean the how to separate the meat how to how to separate the meats and the bone so this is this is uh, their their fit action maybe a uh, prof fit actions mm -hmm. no the the fit will help to separate uh, the meat from the bone from what they are eating is it like that because separate of the, mm -hmm. what they are the meat, how to separate the bee and the bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the carnivores eat using the using the tooth or using the canine. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. to try to separate the meat and the bone. Maybe because the the molar and the molar and premolar, premolar and the molar not so not so not not so important for the carnivores. The carnivores mm -hmm. always use the canine and the incisor to try to spray the, to, re, to remove, to, to take out the meat. Yeah. Yes. 
That's why it is a very large the incisor yeah, Incisor and the yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, maybe like that Haris karena ini incisorsnya um, cukup besar. Jadi itu the uh, the action will be taking uh part by the incisors maybe I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other question, class? Any other? No, if no more question or if you feel shy to ask question, you can ask to <laughs> Okay, you can, okay, no you can yeah. write me. You can write me the question through uh, our class coordinator. Then I will pass to uh, Dr. Chen through okay, Dr. Chen's come. email yeah. if it is okay, Dr. Chen. Yeah, it, I I think in addition to the to the digestion, maybe if, mm -hmm. if all the faculty or all, all the professors, students has a question related to the research or to other parts, we can discuss. I think the 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 research or or teaching is is by is is mutual. I mean the by by the rational. So yes. yeah, yeah. So so we can dis discuss uh, and and anything is okay. Okay, so maybe I would like to ask for your permission. Maybe I will share your email address to the faculty here, Prof. Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> so maybe, no problem. Yes, yeah. so maybe we yeah. can share, uh, what is that, uh, collaboration on research. But uh, if I see that you, you also concerned about uh, tumor and cancer and the treatment with natural product, yeah. Yeah, Prof. yeah, this is my, my mm. topic, yeah. Yes, yeah. so we do a lot of work on that field actually in our uh, faculty. So maybe we will we will have to discuss more about the collaboration. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I I'm great to do that. Yeah, so yeah, I visited Indonesia maybe several times, maybe two 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 years ago. So mm -hmm. so I think we can we can discuss further. Also, if you have some special very interesting topic we can, we can discuss. I also can find the, the faculty in, in the TMU can make the connection. Yes, of course, Prof. We, yeah. we hope we'll be like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chen, for today's uh, lecture. Hopefully, we will meet again next week. Okay. Next Tuesday okay. <laughs> okay. with okay. urinary system, Prof. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe, Prof, you would like to say something before we end the session today. Yeah, it's okay. I already said. Say. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Check. Is it check online? Uh, I'm not oh. sure. I don't think so, Prof. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe okay. we can close here. Yeah. Okay. So we will close here, and we will meet meet again next Tuesday. At okay. 10 p.m. Jakarta time to uh, discuss about urinary system. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time, Prof. Good Thank afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Bye bye, so good class. Day. Good, good day. day.